Okay, hello and welcome to the next section on uh, uh, base vectors. And we're now going to move on to talk about base vectors in plane polar coordinates. Okay, so in the last section, we talked about a Cartesian coordinate system where I have... Um, Oops, I'm trying to draw these cool, uh, I figured out if you use like the control and shift button I can draw orthogonal lines, or I can just draw lines like along 45 or 90 degree lines. Okay, so let's try that again. Okay, there we go. Oh, cool. Okay, so um, we'd learned about i hat is like the uh, vector of length 1 in the x direction, and we learned about j hat being the vector of length 1 in the y direction. And so what if we, um, you know, let's say we had a, uh, a, a vector somewhere. Let's say it's like over here. Actually, let's go from there to there. Okay, so um, let's just call that vector r. Okay, we want to come up with a new coordinate, a new, uh, a new uh, uh, base vector system, which is going to, the way it works is like you say that it's a vector that points in the direction that your vector is in, and then it has to have another little unit vector We'll call it theta hat, which points perpendicular to that. Okay, so remember they're also like our a base vector. So the base vectors have to be orthogonal. So this this little box means that they're they're at right angles to each other. Okay, so question is how do I translate between like the i and j's into the r's and thetas? Well, um, we can do that with some trigonometry. So notice that um, we have here. Let's just say I had like. So this is, let's say, angle theta. And let's just, actually, let's not worry about, we're going to just use, we're only working with the unit vector. So, um, so, okay, so because we're working with the unit vector, we want, we, we're going to want, um, actually, let's just, let's just, like, kind of blow this guy up here. So this is also theta, and we want r hat to equal 1. So, um, in fact, we can write down like r hat has to equal, so this, uh, is, uh, cosine theta in the i hat direction. That's what this amount is. So if this is, this is one, then Cosine of theta is this length, uh, or rather, cosine of theta is like this over that. So it's that that length in the i hat direction plus sine theta in the j hat direction. And then if we kind of blow this guy up, let me just use a different color over here. Um, so this is the theta hat direction. So uh, this angle here is also theta. The, these are like all collinear. So if that's theta, that's 90. This has to also be theta. Um, so uh, theta hat is equal to, so this length is cosine, and this length is sine. So interestingly, it's going to be minus sine theta in the j hat plus cosine theta in the j hat. Did I say j hat? I meant i hat over here. Okay. So interestingly, let's verify. First of all, let's just see what is r hat, the magnitude of r hat. Well, that's cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. That's because you take um, you take the i component and you multiply. You, 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 so we, we can rewrite this as like cosine theta, sine theta. 
and then if we dot product with itself, you take each component, multiply it to itself, and add them. And so cosine squared plus sine squared, well, by the um, laws of trigonometry, we know that cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So that works. Similarly, theta hat is going to be equal to sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta. So that's also equal to 1. Okay, cool. Um, let's look at some other properties. Let's look at um, r hat dot theta hat. Well, that's equal to cosine theta sine theta times dotted with minus sine theta cosine theta. So you just look at the same, you only, only take the, the same components and add them together. So you're going to get minus sine theta cosine theta plus sine theta cosine theta. So that equals zero. So they're actually, they're normal. So, so far we have a vector, which is, uh, two vectors r and theta, which are perpendicular to each other, because this is true. Th th that is r dot theta hat equals zero. And they're each of length one. So this is kind of a neat new uh, uh, base vector system that we can use. Now, interestingly, did you notice that r hat and theta hat only depend on theta? They don't depend on r. So that's quite interesting. Um, so really, you can think of just r hat and theta hat as being functionally dependent on theta hat. Okay. So now let's just think about, a, like, let's go back to our vector r. So before we had r vector is equal to some amount x in the i hat plus some amount y in the j hat. Well, now we can we we see that we can actually write r hat is simply equal to magnitude of r in the r hat direction. So these are equivalent. Um, okay. Um, by the way, we can we can verify that just by looking at, well, this is equal to x cosine theta in the i hat plus y sine theta, sorry, this is, uh, let me, I, I made a mistake there. Let me go back. This is, x is going to be equal to r cosine theta, right, in the i hat plus r sine theta in the j hat. Well, this is equal to r times cosine theta in the i hat plus sine theta in the j hat. Well, that's the definition of r hat. That's r in the r hat direction. So neat. So we've, we actually have a representation now of a vector that's simply like the magnitude of the vector in the r hat direction. r hat's just like the direction the vector's in. So it's kind of cool. So it turns out actually that uh, polar coordinates are going to be extremely useful, especially when we deal with a lot of circular type motion. Um, so before we get to that, though, I want to, um, in the next section, uh, before we actually do some problems, I want to first introduce to you how do you do motion, like how do you compute like the velocity or acceleration in, in, uh, in the polar coordinates. Okay.